So, where does this idea of ring armor or ring mail come from? Basically, a bunch of pseudo-historians in the 19th century made stuff up, made stuff up by looking at murals and tapestries made by poor little monks and poor little tapestry makers who barely have ever actually seen armor and used their imagination to substitute that skill. So every artist's different depiction and style of painting of armor became its own style of mail. Chain mail, ring mail, plate mail, scale mail, on and on and on. Unfortunately, Gary Gygax came across one of those books and used it as reference. So through that it entered into the wider fantasy consciousness. Today it remains a vestigial growth in D&D inventory, just taking up space and nobody using it. You might come across it in some random video game, or find it on Wish as some costume armor. Quite sadly, it's pretty common for some hack costume designers to just slap a bunch of rings on pleather and call it an armor and put it on a big budget TV show. It's really, really embarrassing if you ask me. Other than, I would say, Gimli's Dwarven Mail or something like that, which is actually looks practical and might have inspired some other dwarf enjoyer to design and make his own style similar to it. Other than that, it's pretty ahistorical. But actually, if you really want to stretch the definition, we can actually find plenty, well, not plenty, but few armors that are made out of ring shaped metals. In Europe, you mostly see it as weirder versions of scale. Also, sometimes arming jacks use ring shaped circular metal plates rather than square ones. So eyelid doublets could be technically considered as rings sewn into a coat. There are also plenty of ring metal decorations, usually golden embroidery or something like that. You, it's Or some like little bit of metal bits here and there, which are mostly ceremonial or just fun costumes. I, I wouldn't consider some of them real armor. But in Asia, if we really stretch the definition, we could look at uh, Japanese eco armor, which are hexagon metals which are either sewn or mailed, using like a bunch of mails to hold it together, which kind of fit the idea of like sewn ring armor or ring mail. If we literally remove the ring part of the equation, it fits perfectly. Its shape is actually superior to the ring because it fills out all the holes that ring leaves out. Now, do we actually find armor that is fully made out of ring-shaped metals? Well, curiously enough, we find it in my favorite type of armor. Money armor! Yes, ladies and gentlemen, historically, people have actually made armor out of money. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. We see it in China and Japan. You would think that Modern-day Japanese MMO RPG designers would come up with something like this, but no, actual historical uh, Japanese came up with it. It's a pretty cool idea, using metal coins to make armor, especially using Chinese coins, because their shape allows more versatility in how you put it on. Pretty interesting depiction of coin armor comes from Alaskan Tlingit culture, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, who in 18th century used to trade with the Russians selling furs and other goods, and Russians used to trade those goods with the Chinese. Sometimes they would pay them with Chinese coins. But what? A society based on uh, bartering to do with coins. Well, use them for metal that they're made of. Whole society adopts and uses materials that they need or want to use. A treasure to us would be just metal to others. So I really wanted to integrate it into fantasy or historically based stories and use and make, for example, coin armor for D&D. For it, I wanted to use D&D's very own design of coins. None of them are circular shaped, but quite interesting shapes nonetheless. So 
what the hell. I've simplified them a bit and added a bronze coin, same idea as Electrum, and made something like this. Treasure hoard armor. Very rare. Ring armor, quote unquote, uh, 14 AC plus 2, and an additional magical ability. The idea is that every non-magical damage you take is halved, but the other half is taken out of your pocket. One damage equals one gold coin. And the basic idea is that when you take damage, the coins get damaged and it magically replaces itself. And also, once per day you can activate your armor and it will also take on magical damage, but for 20% extra cost. I added that part as a joke, so I don't know, you do you. The ability is both blessing and a curse. Basically, it depends on how generous your dungeon master is with treasure you get. But if you don't like the idea of wasting your money to save your life, you can pawn it off somewhere as a magical item or, or sell it off for each gold coin it's made of. Let's say 300 gold coins, I don't know.